Hello everyone, I am Priyadarshni Mahara, faculty at the Department of Buddhist Studies, University of Delhi. Today, I would be discussing with you module number 12. This module belongs to paper number 11, Philosophy of Buddhism. Module number 12 is entitled as Divine and Divinity in Buddhism. Now, when we talk about divine and divinity in Buddhism, let us begin with the definition of divine. In Buddhism, divine means the notion of knowing ultimate reality. The concept itself defines the divine as the human entity to acknowledge path which leads to attainment of goal of an individual. Divine is the term which is used in religious purpose as well and that is to portray the identity of God from different gods. Now when we look at divinity in Buddhism we see that it is characteristic of divine. So that means one who is on the path to attain enlightenment. The qualities of divinity are categorized and the divine one from the other one is seen by these categorizations of divinity. All qualities of divine are identified according to posture, gesture or maybe sometimes even signs of hands. So divinity is God like character. In this divinity, the divine things are regarded as eternal and based on two truths. While when we talk about the material things, they are regarded to ephemeral and totally based on illusion. Now these things can be qualified as divine and some view it as soul as well. It is religious term that states that words itself come from supernatural power of deity. These words are such as God, supreme beings, creator, etc. and are regarded as sacred and holy. So that is for the divine and divinity. Divine is that higher existence and divinity is more like the characteristics of reaching or of that higher existence or power when we look at the notion of God in Buddhism. Now first of all try to make a clear distinction between what Buddhism means according to divinity and what the other schools term as divine and divinity. So when we look at Buddhism, according to Buddhism or for Buddhism, their divine or divinity does not point out to any God. When we use this term God, it is not present in Buddhism. Now, let us see what the notion of God in Buddhism is. And it is necessary to establish what it is mean or what is its meaning. This term God is used to designate a supreme being endowed with the qualities of omnipotence and omniscience and who is the creator of the universe will with all its content and the chief lawgiver for humans. God is generally considered of being concerned with the welfare of his human creatures and the ultimate salvation of those who follow his dictates. Now God is therefore a person of some kind and the question whether such a person exists or not is fundamental to all theistic systems. When we look at the use of the term God to denote an abstract reality by monotheistic theologians who have no theory of karma is difficult to justify. One suspects 
that this is merely a device to explain away the contradictions that arise from the notion of personal God. In fact, the actual practice of theistic religion proceeds as if God is a real person of some kind or other. Just as Buddhism rejects the notion of supreme God, it also rejects the notion of God principle operating in the universe. The notion of Brahman is not discussed at all in the Buddhist texts and even in India it may well be a post-Buddhist development resulting from the attempt to reconcile the belief in God with the powerful critique of the Sakyamuni Buddha. It is therefore the attitude of Buddhism to the notion of supreme personal God animating the universe that we must consider. Therefore, when we look at Buddhist texts or Buddhist or the preachings or teachings of the Sakyamuni Buddha, we see there is no mention of any creator or a superpower God. We do not want to get into any sort of controversial issue here. All you need to know is that in Buddhism or according to the teachings of Buddha, there is no mention of any such creature or whom we call God. When we talked about the metaphysical questions as to the beginning of the universe, as to the ending of the universe, as to the creator of the universe, Buddha himself refused to answer these questions because he did not want to disturb the thinking or the mindset of people. All he said was do not waste your time in questions for which you would not find an answer. You would be stuck in the bhav chakra or the wheel of birth and rebirth and which is further endowed with suffering. So try to do or act or perform in such a way that you will be taken out of the suffering. So that is the notion of God in Buddhism. When we look at the divine, we see that divine according to Buddha is that concept and it is related to the notion of God in Buddhism. So instead of a God, we talk about divine. Buddha dismissed all the claims of there being a God. He affirms that by oneself is karm done and by oneself is karm undone. So according to him, no one includes and this includes gods or God can save another. It is only your action that will lead to certain karmic Resultants. This is a cardinal principle of Buddha which cannot be reconciled with the declared attributes and actions of God. He believed that all phenomena, without exception, or exempting in inducing that all animate beings have three essential characteristics. Buddha said that. Buddhist standpoint points out to God created man in his life image has actually reserved for knowledge. It is man who created the concept of God. So when we talk about the God created man, it is only an image that has actually reversed for knowledge. It is the man who created the concept of of God in and man's image are transformed so that of his God does in present time with the rise of feminism there is a change in gender of God from man to women so to liberate himself mankind has to shed his delusion and one of these are existence of God Buddha also defined that path which leads to the divine. According to him that once attained the path of divine by following the 
path that is tread by him, all the divine can be understood and realized as important source to ultimate reality. When we talk about the divine, according to Buddhism, it is nirvana or enlightenment that is the state of divine. The path that leads to this state of divine is and the state first is nirvana. When we talk about the state of divine, the goal of Buddhism is to become enlightened and reach nirvana. Nirvana is believed to be attainable only with the elimination of all greed, hatred and ignorance, lobe, mo and dosh. Within a person, nirvana signifies the end of the cycle of death and rebirth. According to Four Noble Truth or Chatwari Arya Sat, which forms the basis of Buddhist philosophical paradigm, life is suffering. So, ending the cycle of rebirth is something to be desired. Some Buddhists also think Nirvana as a type of heaven where there is no suffering. Others view Nirvana as a state of mind free from suffering. However, according to Buddhists, they believe that a final nirvana is attained at the time of enlightened beings' death and there no longer is remains any cycle of reincarnation and death. Now, the achievement of nirvana is believed that the path which leads there is called the middle way and also the eightfold path. One of the important factors to attain the divine through nirvana is sublime state of mind. Now what is this sublime state of mind? If you remember in our previous module we talked about Brahma Vihar or the four sublime state of mind. So now let me just give you an overview of what we've done already. So sublime state of mind which points out to love or loving kindness which means metta, compassion which means karuna, sympathetic joy which means mudita and equanimity which means upekha. And through this, through practicing of these four sublime states of existence or the divine states of existence, one realizes that divine existence. That is, divinity automatically is developed and an understanding of this concept comes into existence. These four states, love, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity are also known as boundless states which is termed as apamaya. And why are they called boundless states? If you remember these are boundless states because in their perfection and in their true nature they should not be narrowed by any limitation as to the range of beings towards which they are extended. So that is the way that leads one to the attainment of divine and divine according to Buddhism is that ultimate state of nirvana. Now when we talk about parmitas we see that they are also the source to reach this divine state. In Buddhism one has to practice parmitas or virtuous states in order to reach that divinity of divine one. The bodhisattva or an arahat who follows the path to attain that divine state and that which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism, they follow paramitas. Paramita may also be translated as perfection, perfect realization or reaching beyond limitation. Through the practice of these six parameters, 
we cross over the sea of suffering which can also be termed as samsar and move on to the shore of happiness which can be termed as nirvan so we cross from ignorance and delusion to all knowledge and enlightenment each of the six paramitas is an enlightened quality of heart a glorious virtue or an attribute it is more like the seed of perfect realization which is present within us and all it needs to be done in order to make this seed a tree is given perfect training or a controlled training of the sense organs now what are these paramitas we have dan paramita which means perfection of generosity then we have shil paramita which means perfection of morality we have shanti paramita which means perfection of patience then we have virya paramita which means perfection of energy dhyan paramita perfection of meditation pragya paramita perfection of wisdom later on four more paramitas were added on in this list of six paramita so the first is dan then we have shil then we have shanti virya dhyan pragya and that is the paramitas all the details about paramitas have been discussed in module number 30 or paper number 12 so maybe you can look back into that paper through this one can be divine and develop all the characteristics of the divine one now when we look at this concept of divine and divinity we see that mahayan buddhism especially the one that came up in tibetan regions lay a great emphasis on this concept of divine and divinity we see that they have different idols of divine and divinity so first we have avlokiteshwar among the bodhi sattvas it is avlokiteshwar who has the largest number of forms and is perhaps the most venerated and most popular buddhist deity his sex originally masculine is sometimes considered feminine in china and japan although this discrimination is unsupported by any canonical text and was often considered in china and japan as the mother of human race and in this respect worship in the form of a woman avlokiteshwar is known from very early in the de development of the mahayan doctrines and until buddhism disappeared from india he enjoyed great favor even here in india his cult passed from india to south east asia and java where it met with great success and also in nepal tibet where he arrived with buddhism and where king songbasang sangpo 519 to 650 was considered to be his incarnation and in china from where he went to korea and japan all these countries imagined him in different forms according to their own temperaments and spirituality so avlokiteshwar is supposed to be the embodiment of compassion when we talk about tara tara is also an important deity white tara was not adopted until the adoption of yogachar system taught by asang in the 4th century ad and the feminine principle began to be venerated in mahayan buddhism 
around the 6th century, the goddess Tara was considered as a Shakti of Avalokiteshwar, sometimes also as his wife. Many legends have sprung up about or around this goddess. According to one of them, she was born in a beam of blue light emanating from one of the eyes of Avalokiteshwar. Another has her born from a lotus floating in, the, in a tear on his face. It was believed in Tibet in the 7th century that Tara was reincarnated in every virtuous and pious woman. So, uh, when we talk about the two wives of King Sonsang Gampo, one was Wenchen who was Chinese and the other, a Nepalese daughter of Amsuvaram, came to be considered as incarnations of Tara. To differentiate between the two wives, the Tibetans created two distinctive Taras. White for the Chinese with a full-blown lotus as her emblem and green for the Nepalese whose emblem is blue, half-open lotus. Each is believed to have been born from the eye of Avalokiteshwar, open and half-closed. Hence, they came to be considered as symbols of the day, full-blown lotus, eye-open, and the night, half-open lotus, eye-half-closed. But this couple soon multiplied and 21 Taras are mentioned later on in the Tibetan texts. First, we have Avalokiteshwar, then we have Tara, and now we have Manjushri. Manjushri is a disciple and with Samant Bhadra and Asakya Munibud in the groups of images called Shaka Sanzon in Japan, the three venerables of Sakya Muni. He whose beauty is charming, the Bodhisattva of marvelous virtue and gentle majesty, represents wisdom, intelligence and willpower. His adoration confines divine wisdom, mastery of the dharma and infallible memory, mental perfection as well as eloquence. Manjushri was the initiator and master of the Buddhas of past ages and will be that of the future Buddha Maitre. Manjushri is the father and the mother of Bodhisattva and he is their spiritual friend as well. The Buddha himself describes Manjushri and praises him in the Manjushri Parinirvan Sutra. This Bodhisattva was consequently very often represented in India and Tibet, in China and Japan, as well as Nepal, which tradition claims he founded on coming from China. His images appear only late in Central Asia and on a few Chinese steel associated with Vimalkirti, Japanese Yuma Koji in the 6th century. So these are the three divine idols according to Tibetan Buddhism and they were reached till China and even Japan and Korea. So when we talk about divine and divinity, we see an ideal form in Tibetan Buddhism or in the Mahayan Buddhism. As for divine and divinity, this concept is used as in the form of God to point out the nature of Brahman or God according to the belief of Hinduism. Divine and divinity for Christians would be Christ. Divine and divinity for Islam would be Allah. So, we see that this concept of divine and divinity has various forms in various religions and across various spheres of life. Some people would 
not believe in this notion of divine and divinity. However, to the others, it would mean something else. Like for Buddhism or according to the Sakyamuni Buddha, divine and divinity points out to the attainment of that higher goal and which is the goal of liberation. It is said that the theory of karma is justifies this action or this attainment of divine and divinity. When we talk about Buddhism, it rejects the notion of any supreme God and it also rejects the notion of an abstract God principle which is operating in the universe. So the notion of God, supreme God or any abstract God principle is eliminated in Buddhism. The notion of Brahman is not discussed at all in any of the Buddhist text. And even in India, it may well be post-Buddhist development. That would lead to further debate, which we do not want to get into. So all that we want to know is that Buddhism does not talk about any god or any divine form in the form of god particle or any of that sort. Buddha explains that divine concept is related to the claims that there is no such creator and affirms that oneself by oneself is karma done and by oneself is karma undone. When we talk about this omniscience, omnipotence of the God and he is the one who makes us do certain actions, it is like we putting all our ethical norms into the hands of somebody else and if we tend to do something wrong we would say that it is not me who's done this action or who's done an unwholesome deed it is God who made me do it so if you remember there are times while you're writing your exams and if the paper doesn't go well then you generally tend to curse God for not helping you. So here it just totally refutes the claim of any action that God makes us do. According to Buddha, it is one himself who performs an action and one himself who eliminates the action or does not perform any particular action. According to Buddhism, no one can save another. I cannot blame the other person for my actions. It might be under certain influence of somebody else, but at the end of the day, I am the one who is performing that action, be it physically or mentally or through speech. This is a cardinal principle of Buddha, which cannot be reconciled with the declared attributes and actions of God. He believed that all phenomena without exception have three essential characteristics and that is the characteristic of impermanence, suffering and no self. So when there is impermanence, there is suffering and no self. When there is no self, there is impermanence and suffering. So if you look at these, these three terms or these three characteristics, of the phenomenal existence go hand in hand with the statement of the divine and divinity or the divine and divinity according to Buddhism which is the attainment of higher goal and that is Nirvana. To attain that higher goal of liberation which is the state of divine as well as divinity one needs to follow a virtuous or righteous part that is given or displayed by the Buddha himself. He walked through that path and now he's left it open for you and you can become divine and you can be a divinity as well according to Buddhism. It is not an ideal or an idol of, of any particular person which 
can be termed as divine or which can be termed having divinity characteristics. An individual who is on the path to attain enlightenment. An individual who is a bodhisattva or an arhat can be termed as divine or having divine characteristics or can be termed as a divinity. Divine characteristics does not mean the power or omniscience of omniscience or omnipresence but the power to control one's senses and to realize the phenomenal existence of suffering and to move beyond these phenomenal this phenomenal existence into that which is pure and divinity can be termed as divinity with all the characteristics of being divine so a bodhisattva or an arhat is the one who reaches that state and a bodhisattva or an arhat is not any superhuman he is he or she is one amongst us that points out to the fact that any one of us who has developed this bodhi chit or the enlightened mind can reach that state of being a divine or having the characteristics of divine and divinity that is attained according to Buddhism in the state of ultimate liberation nirvana. So this according to Buddhism is the concept of divine and divinity. Thank you.